first, thank you everybody for joining us uh, today uh, for this intro to TSANet. Uh, I, my name is Dennis Smeltzer. I'm president of TSANet. With me is Paul Esch. Uh, he's director of development uh, uh, and uh, strategy, as well as Stephanie Benson is with us over in the UK, making sure that we all get this right. Uh, this has always been a really popular webinar. Uh, and it's good that that we have a bunch of people signed up for it because I think that what happens with TSA Net is it's one of those things that has a tendency to be in the background a little bit. Uh, what we're going to try to do is walk you through exactly what it is, how it works. I'm going to change this up a little bit from my other intro to TSA Net webinars because we're kind of seeing a shift uh, in this organization. Uh, from a process perspective, and I want to walk you through uh, a couple of different options on that, but let's get the foundation set. Uh, I, I get it. A, a lot of times support engineers will change and they, oh yeah, I've heard about TSA net and somebody used it, and but I don't know what it is and uh, I'm not sure what it's all about. And that's what we want to try to resolve the, the bulk of that today. So so I start out every slide to Stephanie will tell you this because we do a lot of these intro calls uh, on what is TSA net and I think it's important we're a not for profit organization have been since 1993 uh, we're up to nearly 900 members now that have been involved with it. The takeaway out of that from my perspective is that what you're going to see here in the platform that we've done is something that the members built it's not. It's not TSA net coming in and saying, this is what you're going to do. You need to buy this. We want you to buy in as a member of this organization and then help drive uh, the value that you get out of the organization. And that's that's what we've done. That's what we're going to spend our time talking about today is the platform a little bit. But it's like an association. Well, it, not it's like it is an association. And we've got other things like focus groups. Uh, and committees and things like that, that that our member companies are involved with. So we invite you to be a part of that to make this organization better for you and meet your needs. Uh, here's the three main bullet points if I look at TSA Net at a very high level, right? Uh, and the first one I just talked about, we're not-for-profit, vendor neutral model. I work for a board of directors that board's elected by the membership. What we do that solves a lot of people's problems from a cooperative support perspective and a collaboration perspective is that every member company that comes into the organization signs a legal code of conduct. And that has got information on how you're going to handle confidential information, things like that. When we started this out, we wanted to resolve the issue of the lawyers getting involved and all the, the legal framework back and forth and back and forth of, of I want this clause and I want that clause. So what we did was we built a foundation and it consists of a license agreement and a code of conduct. And then we build uh, addendums or relationship addendums on top of that. So we don't allow any changes to the code or the license agreement. Every member company, regardless of the member levels, and we'll talk about that as well, but they sign up to the same code of conduct and license agreement. Then we have the ability for you to basically use this infrastructure however you want. And that's the shift that I'm talking about. I want to spend a little bit of time uh, showing you exactly what some other members have done uh, back from our traditional model. I spent a lot of time talking about TSA Net Connect, and that's this third bullet point. This is tactical interface. Uh, we spent a lot of time working on it. We've we finished up with our with our 1.0 phase, getting ready to move into the second phase of this, and we're making so, even some iterations to the first phase of it. So uh, I want to spend a little bit of time in walking you through exactly. And this is this is where the rubber meets the road. This you need to talk to this other company. You need to collaborate with them. Exactly how do you do that? And that's what the TSA Net Connect platform is. We'll walk through that as well. It's kind of step by step in it. Then I'll give you a, a, a live demo as well. It, so this is the main point in, in, uh, of what this is all about. And that is we don't want to finger point a customer around, right? You get into a situation where, and it doesn't happen a lot. TSA Net is, has never been a high volume thing, but it's been one of those highly complex things where where your engineers get into a situation, it would be a whole lot easier for you to be able to get in and work and collaborate with another company to figure out how their product is interfacing into your product or their product is interfacing into the into the customer's environment that's giving you problems to figure out how to resolve that issue without putting the customer in the middle of it. 
So this does, the whole organization is is based on the premise that, hey, you need to be able to get in and collaborate with another, with another member company so you can help resolve this customer issue without finger pointing the customer around, making them start all over again, that, that, that sort of thing. So that's, that's the whole premise behind this. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the membership platform, and, and I think this is important when I when I talk about maybe some of the shift that we're seeing in the in the industry about changing this a little bit. But when we started the organization, the whole concept was you come into this big ecosystem, and as long as the other member company was in that big ecosystem, you had a relationship with them. But when you get into having, and there's in, in this ecosystem, there's basic and premium members, and the, the differentiation between that two is basically a premium is a subset of basic that raises the bar to 24-7, to global support. So there's a commitment for our premium le uh, level members at a higher level, and also being able to respond back with, with a higher level uh, SLA. But the whole concept behind the left-hand side of this equation over here is that you've got this big ecosystem and it involves an entitled mutual customer between the two of you. So where you're part of that and you have an obligation then to respond to that other member company if you're contacted by them or you're contacting them, that obligation only exists if there is a mutual customer between the two parties. And we let each member company identify what a mutual customer is. Typically what that's gonna mean is it's gonna mean it's an entitled mutual customer. So that's the concept behind the open groups. And, and most of you that are on this call are part of that open group big ecosystem. So you're already set up with the ability to contact nearly 80, 90 companies, but then to give you an idea, what we did on the right-hand side of this equation was we, the, the members actually came back to us and said, you know, I've got a partner program or I want to create this environment that doesn't involve a mutual customer. Uh, I've already got that predefined, but I want to use the TSA net structure because I'm already using it to contact my partners. And I just want to expand that scope so that now I can contact these companies under these circumstances. So what we did was we gave our members the ability to create their own ecosystems under a partner program or a strategic uh, relationship uh, or a channel relationship, whatever it happens to be. So, and I'll show you a little of an example, and this is the shift that I'm referring to, is that we're seeing our members starting to use TSANet in a lot of different ways, as opposed to the traditional, I've got a mutual entitled customer. We're now seeing them use this in partner programs where there is no mutual customer or the mutual customer has already been identified where you may be providing a higher level support or that partners doing first level support, whatever that happens to be, we want you to look at TSA net the way it is, which is a lot different than just the traditional, oh, I have to have a mutual customer. That's true for a lot of the relationships, but you have the ability to create your own ecosystems within this to do whatever it is from a partner perspective and a relationship perspective that you might need. So we kind of walk through that a little bit. Uh, I, I don't want to discard the fact that the traditional TSA net is always used in that environment. One of the things we've done over the last couple of years is we went through this data uh, security uh, certification. We are now ISO 27001. We just renewed that, uh, uh, actually it would be a couple of months ago, and we've included now, uh, although we don't have the certificate, should be coming here uh, within, this month, within this month is uh, 27701, which is another certification on top of that. So. So we've done a lot within the data security to make sure that when TSA net is used, that you all are have dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's from a from a data security perspective. So we've gone through that to make sure that the TSA net platform uh, meets that specification. And there's a bunch of information on the website uh, from a data security perspective that that we've done. I know that's a big concern for a lot of companies when you start talking about collaborating outside of your platform and, and with other companies and how that's being handled. And we've done everything as an organization to make sure that from a TSA net perspective, you can feel comfortable that, that we've done that. And we're taking all those uh, steps to make that work for you. So this is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into the TSA net connect platform a little bit in the next several slides. Um, 
the way that the TSN at 1.0 is set up, I, I want this to be kind of the, the big takeaway out of this. It is a method for you to be able to go in, submit a support case to another member company for that member company to then come back and acknowledge that support case and tell you, okay, from this point further, this is how we're going to collaborate. I'm going to email you. We're going to do it. We're going to do it by email or we're, we're going to do it by phone call or, hey, there's sensitive customer information involved in this. So we're going to go in and we're going to use this, this portal or whatever it, it happens to be. So what TSANet is doing is we are connecting the two endpoints together. We're coming in and saying, okay, there's a member company out there from a legal perspective that I talked about earlier. You have an obligation. You have a relationship with that company to collaborate with them. So now what we're doing is we're connecting those two dots. So there's a lot of things that we can do. Uh, it's, it's an API-based platform. A lot of companies will just use alias emails. But there's things that we can do to integrate into CRM systems like a Salesforce or a ServiceNow or whatever it happens to be to make it more part of the workflow. But, but the other takeaway that I want you to get out of that is once those two endpoints have been connected, we can give you back metrics. We can tell you the incident numbers on both sides. Uh, but we're not going to collect any customer sensitive information. You're going to collaborate with that company further uh, using your own business processes, your own security processes, and your own platforms. And you're going to track it doing that. So you're not going to go into TSA net and close out cases. It's There's no additional case number that is given through TSA net. But we, what we are doing is we're coming in, connecting those dots, and if you don't acknowledge the case, then we're also putting an escalation process into place. And as an organization, even outside of that, we're coming back and saying, hey, why didn't you acknowledge this case? So we get involved in it, but only if the company didn't come back and acknowledge that case. So a few things for you to think about through that. Uh, you get more detailed involved in that, then we're going to pull in people like Paul that will talk about some of the integration that we've done, what we can do. Uh, but there are things like single sign-on and all sorts of different stuff that we realize that we want to make this as, as big a part of your process, uh, even that collaboration process outside of your company uh, as possible. So we've, we've taken the steps to do that. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit step-by-step -step on how that happens. I realize this is kind of a busy slide here, but the point of it was that what we what we learned in uh, in putting this platform together has been a few years now that we've done this is that sometimes a case would come in, but it didn't have all the information in it that was needed. And you're going to see that it's a form based system on how it works. So we gave the ability for our members to go back and say, uh, I got this. I know who the customer is because that was on the form that I got. But in this case, I need a little bit more information. So we've given, we've given you the ability, if you received that request, when you go back to acknowledge it, to say, ah, I just need a little bit more information here doing this. And this is going to be going back directly to that engineer that submitted the case. So we kind of connect all that kind of stuff going on. So we've got that acknowledgement going back and forth. But it might be that you just need to add a little bit more information to that. So that's also part of the process and, and how it works. Every company is given their own landing page. Uh, if you're using single sign-on, that would that'd be a, dip, a little bit different process. But essentially, uh, regardless of your membership level, you're, you're given the ability to come into your landing page and see all those companies that you can collaborate with. Obviously, if an engineer wants to, they can come in and they can they can add their favorites and things like that into it. This can even be parsed down to only certain uh, engineers see certain uh, relationships and things like that. We can we can do that as well. But basically, uh, through the ecosystem, you're going to see the partners that you can collaborate with in a typical situation. And then this is the default form that comes up. I want to show you a little bit different examples of this, but this is the the basic one that where there's a mutual customer involved, and it's going to have the information over here on the on the left-hand side, there can be internal notes put in here that can tell you about the relationship if it's different from uh, where a mutual customer is is involved. Uh, maybe some information that that you might need to know internally about that. And there's also some external stuff that would that can be put in there that would apply to all members. Uh, but 
but here the information for the engineer is already going to be pre-populated. And again, what we're doing is we're submitting a support request. So we're even saying down here, don't give us a bunch of information that might be considered uh, uh, customer sensitive. This is not the pace, place for that to be captured. Even honestly, if it is captured, we're deleting it after a certain point in time. Uh, but still, uh, what we want to do is concentrate on the fact that you're submitting a support request. So we want to give the other uh, partner as much information as possible so they know where to direct that case. And in most cases, in the traditional TSANet model, that's going to include who that cust uh, uh, mutual customer is. And these these all these fields can be customized depending on your member level. But then down here, depending on the relationship that you're involved, uh, whether it's a, a custom relationship or whether it's the premium or the basic relationship, is going to identify the SLA that needs to be acknowledged back within the certain time frame. So once that information is all filled out, then basically that engineer submitting the support request would click on submit, and and that starts the process of when when that company should acknowledge that case. If that company doesn't acknowledge that case, it starts the escalation process uh, clock going. Uh, it, and then what would happen is the engineer that submitted the case just gets back a simple email from connect at tsanet.org that says, okay, this is what I captured that you sent to that other partner. And by the way, if this needs to be escalated at a further point in time, or if that company doesn't acknowledge that case within the SLA, Here's what you need to do. And so that's obviously going to be uh, company specific as to what their escalation process is going to be. And again, from a TSA net perspective, if that case isn't acknowledged within time frame, then we're notified of it and TSA net staff is starting to get involved in, hey, what happened? Did the engineer just not click on the on the form or they work on the issue, whatever it happens to be. So there's something from a from an association perspective that we're involved with here. On the receiving side, and I'm going to use this as an example, I mean, this could flow into a CRM system or, or uh, with an automatic response or something like that. Uh, but let's just say that it goes into an alias email uh, or whatever it would come in uh, to wherever it was designed to go. Uh, and it would have all that information in there, including those custom fields that I referred to earlier. and and whoever responded back to that, they would just click on respond to whatever the company is, and then they would put in their case number, who the engineer is that's going to work the issue. Uh, this up here has to do with that flow chart that, that had, oh, I need some additional information or whatever. But then over here, the engineer is going to say, okay, I'm going to, this is how I'm going to work this issue from this point forward. I uh, open up a Slack channel. Let's, let's talk to each other. Uh, I know about this uh, particular uh, case that's going on or whatever it happens to be. So I'm going to direct it to this particular engineer that's working the case. Whatever that information is, again, from a TSA net perspective, uh, what we're doing is once that case has been acknowledged, we're going to collect the information here about what the case numbers are, uh, the fact that a case occurred, the timing involved in all that. But we're not collecting any information from this point forward. We're not going to going to uh, be involved in this. It's now up to you guys to work the issue uh, between each other and, and track that within your own CRM system. So let me go in. I want to show you a couple of different things here. Uh, and so what I've done is I've logged in here as a test company. And let me give you a little bit more of the traditional thing that I was talking about. So, so I'll come in and I'm going to just give you an example of what can be done. So we'll go into a company like VMware. Uh, and if you were submitting a case to VMware, uh, it would have in here, here's my information has been pre-populated. Uh, again, I would put in my case number. Here's that problem summary information. Now, we're, we're integrating with, uh, with VMware's uh, uh, CRM system a little bit. And what they wanted was some custom fields. So what they're able to do is we're able to create some custom fields. So when that that call flows in, it's going into their CRM system, pointing it to wherever it needs to go. Uh, and, and they're collecting this information about, about the product and the version number, things like that. So a lot of different things you can do with custom fields regarding this. Up here, that traditional thing about, yes, there is a mutual customer involved in this. So we want you to put in what that customer information is. 
you'll see a little bit different variations in this, uh, depending on, on what company is you're contacting it. There could be a serial number, there could be account number or something like that. But essentially what's happening here is you're, is you're sending information over there. So that receiving company can validate the information that's put in. I would, again, depending on the relationship, select the priority of the call. That's going to, that's going to start that escalation trigger. If, uh, if they don't respond within that X amount of time, that kind of thing, and then submit the case and then it would go in. The shift that I'm talking about is where members are starting to use this in a little bit different environment where maybe it doesn't involve a mutual customer or it's a different environment outside of that scope. So what I want to do is give you an example of, of other things that members have done here. Whoop. Uh, with this form that gives you just another example. So that, again, we pre-populated this information, but now we're coming in and we're saying, okay, is this an incident, a problem, or something other than that? So, and you put in the name of the service, the version numbers, again, the whole, the whole thing, this, this is all customizable, right? So what I want to leave you with, with a, with a big takeaway out of this from a TSNet perspective is it doesn't always have to be a relationship. We can help you to form those custom groups. And typically it would be in addition to the, the uh, standard ecosystem of a mutual customer that you've already got. So because TSANet has been involved in, oh, it's a mutual customer that's always involved, we've sort of been stereotyped into that. And we want to make sure that you understand that we can pull you outside of that. Even existing relationships that you might have right now where you're trying to pull in a bunch of different partners to do a lot of different things, you can use the TSANet structure to do it. We can help you onboard those partners into it. Uh, we can work with you on the integration, on getting that call, uh, sent to the right place and the right team and things like that, and having that right information put into uh, either an email or going into your CRM system, whatever that happens to be. So again, a lot of detail behind this. I get that, right? It, it'd be specific to, to your situation and the relationship that you needed to have. Uh, what I want you to, again, to get out of this is that there's a lot of different things that, that you can do with TSANet from this perspective. Okay, whoop, come right back here. And just about finished up here, what I, uh, I this is our, whoop, this is our, uh, our, our membership. Uh, we're getting ready to, to do some changes within TSANet uh, and you probably just stay tuned, but this is our current membership platform right now. I, I would have you pay particular attention to this limited uh, membership level that's uh, there are some people that are on this call that are limited members. That means that basically, instead of coming into the big ecosystem and then you having the ability to create your own ecosystem, you've been invited by a member company to come into as a limited member. It, it essentially means that you have a one-to-one -one relationship with another member company, whatever that happens to be. It could be a, uh, a partner group or it could be a solution support group. But you have the ability, whether you're a basic or premium member, to pull these companies in uh, to this limited membership and have a one-to-one -one relationship where they don't have to come into the big ecosystem. They can just come into that one-to-one -one relationship with you. Then there's a lot of different things behind the whole membership model uh, that we can go into. If you're a limited member, want to consider upgrading into doing some different things with TSANet, it gives you, it really opens up the ability to do things like single sign-on and more integration, things like that, uh, as well as creating your own ecosystems uh, as part of your membership package. Uh, the thing I'm going to end up with here is our regional focus groups, which have really taken off uh, even through COVID. Uh, it has done really well, and we've got focus groups throughout the world. Uh, these people meet uh, typically once a quarter, sometimes a little bit more than that. Uh, and it's taken it beyond the TSA net scope. So these people might be talking about how we're getting our engineers back into the workforce. Uh, what are they doing with uh, surveys for customers? How are they identifying needs? How are they doing things like that? And specific to the region. So we've got uh, really active focus groups throughout the world. Uh, I would invite you to get involved with that. Uh, you can send an email to membership at tsanet.org. Uh, 
Uh, actually, our consultant out of Europe works with the India and the Europe focus group, uh, which is Reiner, but get a hold of Paul at tsanet.org. Uh, he can get you set up with these focus groups as well. Uh, but again, this takes it beyond. We're trying to provide even more value, uh, and we're looking at doing some things in 2023 uh, to be to even expanding this a little bit more into into working with uh, what we can do to help you not only from a multi vendor perspective, but just from a general support perspective and and making your support department the best that it can be. So that's gonna that's gonna be it for me, uh, Paul. Anything that you wanted to uh, to add into uh, to the intro call. You there? Hello. Yes, sorry. Uh, ah. <laughs> if you could go back to the, uh, the, the demo, if you could go back to the home page. Yep. Yeah, clear on there. Yep, yep. So uh, so I know Jenny was looking for some breaking uh, some breaking news. Uh, we do have one, so we've just launched the technical knowledge exchange. Um, so you can see it right there, right underneath the search. Uh, in fact, click on the learn more. Uh, see uh, no, up, up right here, right, right there. there. Yep, go ahead and click that. Um, so this is something we piloted in uh, India and Europe uh, last year, and we uh, expanded it to include uh, Japan. Uh, so what you can see here is you can. Uh, register for upcoming sessions uh, and these are highly technical uh, sessions targeted at your support engineers um, so you can register for example for this vmware uh, one that's coming uh, uh, actually here in about a week uh, and then if you scroll down um, you'll see all of the previous sessions uh, that you can view so we record these they're about an hour long and you can see the topics right again they tend to be very very technical the types of things that uh, your engineers may uh, appreciate, especially if they're working on products that interface with some of these vendors and some of the technologies that they're talking about. Um, so really one of the big drivers that we've been trying to uh, do with this is uh, really get the awareness up for the uh, support engineers. Uh, I'm sure a lot of the folks on this call, uh, you know, understand the, the frequency of multi-vendor collaboration isn't um, uh, super high. So what tends to happen is you train your support engineers, you tell them about TSA net, and then once the opportunity comes to collaborate, maybe they they forgot about it. Um, uh, but obviously, you know, uh, knowledge and, and training and things like that is something that they can take advantage of right away. So uh, definitely highly encourage you to point your engineers, uh, you know, back to TSA net connect and say, hey, there's this thing called knowledge exchange. Now you might want to take a look at some of the sessions and uh, uh, register for the upcoming ones, and then we'll be, ha we'll be enhancing this also where they can make requests for upcoming uh, sessions. So right now that's kind of done through the focus groups. We kind of uh, talk about that there and see what makes sense uh, to um, uh, to uh, to do in the future, but uh, uh, we'll be making that a little bit more more automated. And again, this is available to all members regardless of their member level, right, Paul? Yes, definitely. And somebody asked if this would be recorded. Yes, it is being recorded. Uh, we'll send that out. Uh, we always post that on the uh, the website as well, but we'll send it to, to everybody that's registered. Okay, and we actually took up the full 30 minutes. Yeah. Didn't yeah. expect that to happen. So uh, if there's no other questions, and I, I take it, Paul, you're monitoring that queue? Yep. We're good. We'll, we'll, we'll let everybody get back to uh, to their day and have a good one. Appreciate you joining us uh, here today and uh, let us know. Again, if you've got any questions, send an email to Dennis or Paul at tsanet.org. Just our first name at tsanet.org. All right, take care, everybody. Great, thanks a lot.